sometimes when you speak just right out of your mind, you might offend some people. And I would like to apologize in advance. So in case your sentiments are a little bit lightweighted, just do a swipe and there are enough of shorts on YouTube now and you can spend your time there. But this is my video about stating some of the inner thoughts that I have recently and just stating them out in front in public. I would like to accept this that there was a time when I believed that people who come into the toothpaste ad recommending me the toothpaste are actual doctors. Yeah, innocent me, but yes, there was a time when I actually believed it until I actually went up onto a shooting which was happening in my city earlier than when I was in the childhood. So I saw that so much goes into when things are being shot, directors and action heroes and crews and acting and all of that. And everyone who is wearing the white coat is not actually the doctor. And this entirely changed my perspective of watching the television. I was not watching the television just it was before, it was entirely different for me. And I thanked myself that, thank goodness that this stupid box is just hanging on, this, on the wall now. But seeing the entire situation right now, this stupid screen is now in everybody's hand. And I'm super glad that I was not born in this era because it is so much tough now for the kids and for students because everybody is trying to just influence them through their mobile screens on the TVs and pretty much everywhere screen is everywhere. How would I have coped up with this entire situation. I have no idea how could I manage this and I have no idea how kids these days are managing and coping up with that. They have so much of decisions to make. They are worried about their coding classes, their piano classes and their PUBG games and even their investment at this early age. This is mind boggling. I absolutely hate to accept this but this is already an era of influencer. And these influencers gets a majority of market shares and the influence of these old Bollywood celebrities is less than these influencers on the social media. In the present day world, for the present kids, Ambani's and Adani's and their kids are not rich because they are not on YouTube, they are not vlogging. People who make these videos with these big expensive cars, lavish lifestyle, big homes, don't forget the 20 pair of shoes, they are the real rich kid. And everybody who had made the YouTube video that how I made one crore in the last month or a 10 crore in the last year, they are really rich. Nobody else is. Everything is running around with deception, right from watching the YouTube videos till you get your salary. I come from a time where the salary was really simple. You are given a number, you can divide it by 12 and that's what you get as a salary. And of course, minus the TDS, the taxes, which you can get at the end of year. But now it's not like that. Companies know that people love to show off the things rather than getting the things in actual hand. Now companies do this, this cost to company, the CTC. They calculate how much Wi-Fi you're gonna consume, on what chair you'll be sitting, we got a table tennis for you. A whole lot of insane amount is added to this and they call it as cost to company. Why the hell I care about the cost to company? But somewhere behind the scene, companies know that I do care. It is more important that what you get in your hand rather than saying I have a salary of 40 lakhs per annum or my CTC is 80 or my CTC is 40. This is entirely the world of deception. Deception is easy and it is favorable. It is enjoyable. Everybody likes the deception and that is why deception is served to all of us. Putting up a nice background inspirational music and saying that Bill Gates dropped out the college, that's why he owned Microsoft. And so many other, other great personality did the same, dropping out the college, because that's an easy way. And taking action on the easy thing is much more easier. Nobody's going to tell you that how much it was difficult for Bill Gates and in what great position he was in so that he could actually run the Microsoft. And still, they are not gonna tell you that there are a lot of great personalities that finished their education, moved and were able to grab opportunities in other countries and now leading these big tech giants. Was education great at that time? 
Of course not. It was flawed at that time. It is flawed at this time also. That time education didn't allow these great personalities of India to move abroad and grab opportunities and serve and lead these great companies. No, they didn't. But still, these guys finished their education, grabbed other opportunities or were able to grab these opportunities and thus are at a great position. But this is not inspiring because it requires a lot of hard work and move forward. But when with an inspirational music says Bill Gates was a dropout, it's an easy step. That's why it's easy to follow. With this big long game of deception that is running around, this also leads to the Masiha. This is also kind of an influence that I'm seeing around a lot. You're gonna see a lot of people do this Masiha kind of a role, which is funny in itself. I'm pretty sure you have seen this photo or this photo of mine somewhere at if you are if you are into the IT industry. Now I can obviously come out and say that I'm being approached by a lot of companies and these companies have asked me that we'll pay you 50 lakh for this photo or 30 lakh for this photo or in general in the reality also these such photos are being sold to 30 to 40 thousand rupees. Pretty easy. But I made this photo open source because I felt the pain that a lot of people want to do marketing but they are not finding good photos for this coding paradigm. And I did open source this photo so that anybody can use it even for commercial purpose. I don't mind it at all. Now does this make me a Masiha? Not at all. I just openly donated it and that's pretty much it. That's the transaction. I was not interested in getting, getting anything back. Does it make other photographers who are selling their photos absolutely bad and horrible? No, not at all. If that's not the case, how come if I'm teaching some topic for free and other is charging for the same topic, how can that guy be bad? I teach JavaScript absolutely for free on YouTube doesn't mean that other guy who is teaching it for some amount of money and that money may range from few hundred rupees, few, few thousand rupees to few lakhs of rupees doesn't mean they are bad. Just because you have watched a series of 1992 scam doesn't mean you have to label everything as scam. Deceiving marketing? Maybe. Scam? Absolutely not. Everything is a transaction. You need to understand this very, very clearly. Sometimes you get a lot in the transaction as a return. Sometimes you don't expect anything in the return. But there is a transaction that is always happening. Just because I have said some pumped up words and motivational words and all of that and I'm saying all are bad guys, I'm just the only Masiha, I'm teaching you everything for free or I'm doing this for free. This is just a naive and I think only kids get influenced but the irony is that YouTube is majority kids consuming content. Just because you're doing something great, something good, which we all appreciate, you don't need to bring somebody else down. They are doing great, they're charging or not, that's their business. You need to do just your job. Just remember one thing, no matter how deceiving things are or not, how much things are free or paid, everybody needs to earn some money and everybody needs to pay their bills. So there is always a transaction that is happening up. Anybody who is giving you anything on YouTube or any social media, there is a transaction that is happening around. Sometimes you see that, sometimes you don't see that. Sometimes it is through the ad revenue of YouTube. Sometimes it is the transaction of numbers, getting more followers, getting more subscribers, and eventually probably later on five years down the road or 10 years down the road, making some big business out of it. So everything is a transaction. You need to be very open about it. And again, this really makes me wonder that how I would have survived in this era. In my time, I was really happy and all we cared about was after the game of basketball at the evening, we had just five rupees and the only goal was just to have a soda at the end of the game and that's it. No agenda, no worries, nothing at all. It was really a peaceful and quiet full time. Now people are so much worried about so many things. Will I get this coding bootcamp? Uh, will I have to invest my money as early as possible? Like, this is crazy. I was solving just my compound interest question and kids at the same age now are worried about the compounding of their investment in this XYZ apps. Crazy time. And yes, I do agree that to some extent things are changing. For example, video games, they are, they are changed a lot. In my time, video games was really simple. I just was playing them during the afternoon because if I'll go outside in the afternoon, I'll get sick and my parents don't want that. But as soon as somebody shouts my name at five o'clock, 
I'll just run like a dog is behind me. My mom, I still remember, was shouting at me, pack this video game, you cannot go out without packing this. And I'm just saying, please, please, you pack it up. Because the goal was to go outside, play cricket, play football, get a good physical health. That was not even the goal. It was just going outside with the friends and playing. But now the video game has changed. People are spending more time on their screen and playing the video games and are seeing as a career option as the video game. And I'm not saying it's it's bad, it is definitely possible, but what is actually the real path? Who is going to be your coach? Who is going to define that what you can achieve, what you cannot achieve in that, and how much time you should be spending there? Excess of everything is bad. Oh gosh. I know, these are just random scattered thoughts, but just like these thoughts are very scattered in this video, the life of these kids are scattered as well. And this is the most difficult part. Everybody is just so hurried up in blaming the education system for all of this. That is not a true thing. There are a lot of things which are changing. For example, video games, the influencer, the advertisement, the YouTube. There is so much of variable here that just blaming the education system is not right. And of course, I know that. I am one of those guys who went up onto the TEDx stage and openly criticized the education, but not just mindlessly criticizing it, also presenting some of the possible solution that can be there. And surely education system is a little bit messed up, but we don't need to drop out. We need to fix that education system and focus more on finishing up our graduation at least. And while we were thinking of trying to fix the existing problem, this situation came up as pandemic and now schools are online and kids are even far away and are moving on the verge of the dropout again. This is so messed up. Yeah, there are a lot of thoughts in my mind regarding all of the situation. And really, I, I, I'm again thinking that, yeah, thank goodness I'm not from this era. I born pre-internet and just absolutely thankful for that. All I want to say as a summary of this is just understand a few things that there is a lot that happens behind the scene. When you see a vlog, a YouTube video, anything at all, an influencer, there's a lot that happens behind the scenes. Sometimes deals are being made behind the scenes. Sometimes people are playing a long game of five years or 10 years and just collecting the numbers and eventually build up their business and everything. There's a lot that happens behind the scene. All the happy vlogs and the richness of the vlogs that you see, they probably might be true, probably might be deceiving. This is really the toughest time for you and I get you all the guys and girls who are watching this video. Just be a little bit more cautious. You have to be more cautious. You have to work a little bit more hard. And that's all. That's all I have to say for this random thought video. Uh, definitely, you don't need to hit subscribe, share, or like this video. Don't do any of that for this video at least. Just get out of the washroom where probably some of you are watching this video. Go outside, play in the park, have a chit chat with your friends, or just have a meaningless talk with your dad for an hour. Just do that kind of a stuff. Forget about subscribe or anything. Just don't do that for this video. And make sure you keep a smile while doing anything. All my thoughts are running. Running around inside my head Emotions keep coming They're keeping me from thinking straight Thought it would be different When I got my thing